I watched Across the Spider-Verse the other day, and it was pretty good. In fact, everyone I've seen and heard of online all unanimously agree that it's very, very good. So what's the plot? So the main driving force of the film is like revealed midway through. Not That doesn't mean that the first half is like filler. It is then followed by a really cool chase sequence. Miles are getting ambushed by like hundreds of spider people. Then again, I think all the other spider people are, getting, are heavily and seriously nerfed just so Miles can win. And it's really fast paced, but not to the point you don't understand what's going on and where he's going and where everyone else is. Miles is trying to figure out his own identity or something and how alone he feels being Spider-Man and the pressure he gets from his parents and having to keep the secret that he is Spider-Man from them. I don't want to talk about the plot too much because it's quite spoilery. And there are quite a few twists and turns. Instead, I will talk about all the things that were good like around the plot. So, the characters. Characters go hard. Every single character is a massive W. <laughs> Miles, he's still pretty cool. He's been Spider-Man for around like a year and he's quite used to it. But the main plot of the film is him trying to understand and find who he actually is, which... And I thought, we, I thought they kind of answered that in the first film, but I, 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 I don't know. Spider-Woke Gwen comes back and the film actually begins with her and takes a good like 15 minutes before Miles is actually reintroduced into the film. The main villain of the film I think is actually really good and he's quite enjoyable. He starts off as like a joke character, but then he becomes quite serious and like a dangerous threat that no one was that bothered about until he actually became literal death incarnate. The side characters are also very good, that being, that being Indian Spider-Man and Spider-Punk. And to be honest, I didn't really like Spider-Punk at first because I thought he was a bit of a bellend. But he comes in clutch later in the film. And looking back, I realised he was quite cool. Despite the fact I think he, he's a bit too pretentious. A bit of a, a bit trying a bit too hard. But now, Spider-Punk is a massive W. Indian Spider-Man is a massive W. And uh, Spider-Man 2099, he's also really, really good in this as well. Spider-Man 2099 has that dog in him. And I love that. The animation is very stylized, which works very well in the film's favor and exactly what it's trying to go for. We're trying to be like a comic book brought to life. And so one thing I love is how, the, how it expands a lot more into the whole different universes and the whole multiverse. And all the universes look completely different to one another. And the art style of the world's changed, but the art style of the characters remain the same, if you know what I mean. So, Mar so like Miles is drawn and animated in a certain way. And his universe like accommodates that and fits him, fits him and, his arms, uh, and his art style. But when he goes to like Mumbatton and Indian Spider-Man's universe, the animation style is different. But he, but Miles still looks the same in the same animation style from his universe. So it was like something from like the first one, which they did with the other Spider people. But since we see like more universes and more different art styles, it shows just how much work was put into the characters and the environments. And the sheer variety of the different animation is just lovely to watch and a complete feast for the eyes. Like Gwen's universe is like an abstract painting with how the environment changes depending on the tone and the emotions of the scene. And in the very beginning, there's a villain that looks like he's drawn on top of parchment paper, but it's not to the point where it's jarring or they look out of place, even though they are out of place and meant to be out of place. It's like if you got, you know, physical comic books, cut out the characters from the paper and stuck them all together on like a different piece of paper to make your own story, which I imagine is exactly what they were going for and they succeeded very well. Okay, so this film is basically reference fan service central. <laughs> There's a lot of references and fan service in the film, but not so much that takes away from the plot. Because if anything, the more references, the better. Because it is meant to be like a multiverse thing. So it's required for there to be Spider-Man from all this other stuff that fans would want to recognize. They even show Tobey Maguire in some of the animated Spider-Man series, which goes to show that they care about them. These references do in a way play into the main plot and explain why all these Spider-Men exist. However, the film does end on a cliffhanger, which made me quite sad since I wasn't aware this was gonna be a two-parter. That explains why some things I personally think didn't get enough time or focus. And, and, the, and the entire film is kind of like a build-up and like setting up events for the next one. So nothing really gets paid off in this one to, that much or at all. As I imagine, the stuff that didn't get as much attention in this film will probably get a lot more in the next one. Because I want to see more Indian Spider-Man, see more Roadman Spider-Man doing stuff. Your butters! That means you're ugly. I always have one question if anyone else had this, but when they were watching the film, was the dialogue or voices a bit too quiet to the beginning? Because I just want to know if I'm just deaf in my ears or if anyone else had that issue, because if so, I need to see a professional. It was nice seeing all the Spider-Man from different universes. However, I was searching for one specific Spider-Man. I had my eye out for one certain kind, and I don't think I saw him in the film. And that was... <laughs> My personal favourite Spider-Man of all time, and is canonically one of the most powerful Spider-Men ever made. So if, if he wasn't in this film or the next one, I completely understand because he will literally murder everyone. Yeah. 
either there's like a quick like blink or you miss it cameo or like a minute long sequence that's live action where he's getting drunk at a party and then shoots up the place like he does in the original film and if you don't know what Italian Spider-Man is and why I'm so upset about that I made a, a video a long time ago and you should go watch it if you want to know more do excuse it was made a long time ago it was my first ever video I ever made so don't expect too much so yeah Spider-Verse very good some people are saying it's one of the best Spider-Man films which I don't fully agree with I think Spider-Man Italian Spider-Man is way better so go watch yourself. I have to go now and probably get my ears checked. So then, see you when I see you.